In this video, I will show you how to test for metric invariance. Uh, here is the model that we're going to test. It has uh, three latent constructs, safety, mindfulness, and absorptive. And for each of these, it has a number of items that are loading on these. And we also have two groups, producers and service providers. I have set the uh, variances of the latent variables to 1 in both of the groups. And the different paths and loadings have, uh, in this model, which is unconstrained, not been constrained to be equal, but rather been given labels uh, that are different. So if you look at the factor loadings, you can see how they shift between 1 and 2 for the last number as I switch back and forth between the two groups. So what we're looking at right now is the unconstrained model. Now, in order to test for uh, measurement invariance, what we're going to do is that we're going to create a uh, model uh, where we have full measurement invariance, and then we're going to compare that model to the unconstrained model, and we'll see what we, what we get out of that. So I've already created this one, so I'm going to double click here. And this is the model for full measurement invariance. And here I've specified that all of the different factor loadings are going to be equal across the two groups. Uh, so let's see what happens when we run that one. So we click Run. Oh, I need to load the data sets. I'm sorry for that. Let's see, where did I have those here? services. Okay, now we can run it. So click on the output and we click on model comparison and assuming model unconstrained to be correct. And right now we're only going to look at the first row here for full measurement invariance. Now here we can see that there is a significant difference between the model that has full measurement invariance and the model uh, that is unconstrained. Therefore, at this level, we cannot claim measurement invariance. So how do we go forward from here? Well, we need to locate the, um, the source of the measurement invariance and see if we can pin it down to a specific latent variable and uh, possibly even a specific uh, factor loading. So let's go back to our model. And you're going to double click here on your uh, model, manage models uh, window. Now, you need to create new models now. And you can do that through clicking the new button. Before you do that, I recommend that you copy all of these variables using uh, Control C or Command C if you're on the Mac. And then you can paste it into the new model that you create through clicking new and just uh, modify it so uh, that it conforms to whatever you want to do with the new model. I've already done this. So I'm going to show you what I did. Now, what I did was that I created a model with invariance for each construct. So this model only uh, constrains the factor loadings for mindfulness. And this model here only constrains the factor loadings for absorptive. And this model here only constrains the factor loadings for safety. And through running these models, we can see whether each of these latent constructs and the items that load upon them are invariant in themselves, disregarding the rest of the model. So let's let's try that again. And since we've already run these, we can just bring out the output again and click model comparison and assuming model unconstrained to be correct. So let's first look at mindfulness. We can see that the mindfulness, when we compare the completely unconstrained model to the model where all the factor loadings for mindfulness are constrained, we do not get significantly different results. Therefore, we can conclude that the factor loadings for mindfulness are invariant. If you look at absorptive, we have the same situation. It's not significantly different, and thus the factor loadings for absorptive are invariant. However, if we look at safety, we'll see here that for safety, there are significant differences between the unconstrained model 
and the fully constrained model. So we need to dig deeper into the variable, the latent variable safety. So we go back to our model and we open up the uh, safety model. Now what we want to do here now is that we want to create uh, three different models to test one for each factor loading. So I've already done this and as you can see here I have a model here where everything is constrained except for Q46. I have a model here where everything is constrained except for Q48 and I have a model here where everything is constrained except for Q49. So let's run those and see if we can locate the source of the measurement variance to one of these items. So back to the output, model comparison, assuming model unconstrained to be correct. We see here that for uh, Q46, there are not significant differences. For Q48, this is just below 0.05, but I still think it's close enough to be able to argue that there is a certain level of measurement invariance here. However, Q49 is definitely lower, and I think that this is the main source of the measurement invariance, because a model that has everything constrained, except for Q49, still shows uh, significant differences. So we're going to create one last model, and it's this one. Now in this model we've constrained everything except for Q49. So let's see what that yields. Model comparisons, and assuming model unconstrained to be correct. And we can see that for all constraints except for Q49, just below 0.05, but I still think it's high enough to, to say that there are no significant differences between the unconstrained model and uh, the model where everything is constrained except for 49. Thus, we have located the source of the measurement variance to uh, Q49. All the other factor loadings can uh, safely be argued to be uh, invariant when it comes to measurement.